Hi, I'm autistic and for the last six to seven years I've been struggling with panic disorder but I've only really been able to give that a name in the last few years and prior to that I did not know what was going on. So today I want to talk about how this developed, what the experience has been like and what I've been doing to move towards recovery because I would say that I am now finally seeing some signs of improvement and recovery and so it feels like a good time to talk about this. So my panic disorder was triggered by a specific traumatic event but at the time that it happened I didn't really realise that it was particularly traumatic. So I had just started working as an autism advocate and making online content and doing public speaking and I was going to Manchester to speak at a conference, the National Autistic Society Women and Girls Conference specifically and I was getting the train and I had intended to get there about mid-afternoon the day before the conference so that I had time to settle into Manchester, get to my hotel and be really ready for the conference the next day. But unfortunately, the train that I was on had an incidence where it had to stop for around six hours without moving, about an hour into the journey. This was because of something that I don't really want to speak about because it could be triggering for some people, but it's like a, a, a traumatic thing that can happen when trains are operating. Um, and initially we weren't told what was going on and we had no idea where we'd stopped or when we would move and eventually we were told what was happening and we were given water but other than that we weren't given a lot of updates and we didn't really know what was happening, I didn't really know what was happening or when I would get to Manchester. Luckily I have a really close cousin who lives in Manchester and I was keeping her updated and she was able to pick me up but I didn't get into Manchester until midnight that night which meant that I arrived at the hotel really late and feeling quite stressed and anxious because I'm prone to anxiety I would say before my panic disorder I was prone to being quite a worrier, quite an anxious person and that night I went up to my hotel room and I had what I now know was a panic attack at the time I thought that I'd become unwell because I don't think I'd really experienced a panic attack before and I didn't know what that was like. And I was in a city, on my own, in a hotel with nobody to turn to and it lasted on and off for most of the night. And then I had to get up and do the conference on very little sleep. So that was really quite a horrible experience but I guess I didn't think too much about it because I'm the kind of person that does tend to bounce back quite quickly and just kind of get on with the next thing and cope, or at least I used to be. After that, I was invited to speak at another conference in London about, I don't know, six months later. And I didn't really think too much of it. I did manage to get into London earlier in the day, so I had time to settle in and I went into my hotel room that night. I started to have another panic attack. So I called another friend who was in the hotel and luckily they were so kind and they looked after me but I had what was basically like a rolling panic attack that lasted the entire night again and was really traumatic to the point where I was ringing my husband and asking him could he possibly come and pick me up in the middle of the night and bring me home um, which of course wasn't possible it was just really scary horrible experience that even when I was around other people didn't go away and wouldn't stop and everything I'd read about panic attacks told me that it would last 10 minutes and I would be able to get through it so this felt really frightening and overwhelming and all the reassurance that I was trying to find about how to recover from a panic attack after this had happened wasn't helpful because it would be like remind yourself that the panic attack will only last 10 minutes. Anyway moving forwards every time that I tried to stay away from home I would have panic attacks in the hotel room in cottages that we would book for family holidays. About a year ago I went on a holiday to Disneyland Paris with my immediate family and some of my larger family and nearly went home on the first night. In fact people who follow me on my Instagram account will remember many Instagram stories in which I've had this experience and really struggled with staying away from home. So I made my life smaller and I stopped planning holidays and I stopped going to conferences and I started only speaking in public if I could get there and back in a day. Like I basically narrowed my life to avoid these horrible panic attacks and I thought that that would be fine. I would just work from home. I just can't do this. That's fine. And then I did a job that was a filming shoot for the day here in Bristol 
for a client of mine who wanted some content made for their YouTube channel and it was quite an exciting and stimulating day. I filmed something crazy like six videos in a day with a full film crew, a director, a producer, cameramen, um, the client themselves in the green room. It was like a lot of people in a very intense environment and I was like the talent, if you like, like the main person that was being focused on for the whole day. And that was kind of a good excitement. It's work that I really love to do and I really want to do, but I think maybe it was too much for me because I came home that night and I was in my home where I would normally feel safe and I started to have the worst panic attack that I have ever had in my entire life. It was, it was awful. And alongside the panic attack, I also got this weird, like tw uncontrollable twitch. I ended up having to go to A&E at like two o'clock in the morning because of the twitch really, because we didn't know what this was, but also because I just felt, honestly, I felt like I was not gonna make it through the night. It was, it was horrible. And then I just started having anxiety and like the bit before a panic attack where you can start to feel it coming on became like my new normal most evenings, which was a horrible period of time. And this went on for about, I'm gonna say six to nine months of dreading the evenings because of this horrible panic that might or might not turn into a panic attack. Sometimes I would be able to do the breathing exercises and control it enough to avoid a panic attack. And sometimes I wouldn't and I would have to go through horrible panic attacks before finally getting a very small amount of sleep and having to function the next day. Um, I also started to develop what I would kind of maybe call like a kind of agoraphobia. Um, where I also couldn't go out very easily without my husband, who is like my carer as well. So I would try and go into town with just my children and I would start to feel anxious and need to come home. So my life got even smaller. So I got to the point where I was struggling to go anywhere but my very, very familiar routes without the support of my husband, which was obviously really difficult for both of us. And it was at this point that I decided to try and challenge myself. I'd been invited to speak on a panel at a conference in Manchester and I thought that I would not let this anxiety beat me and I was going to go and I was going to do it. So we drove to Manchester, they put me up in this really nice, not just a hotel room, like a hotel suite, it was lovely and they put up me and my whole family because I wanted to travel with my family so I wasn't alone. And as soon as we arrived in the hotel, I was hit with such overwhelming anxiety that I ran away. So I basically ended up driving to Manchester and then driving straight back again. And we're talking a five hour drive, so 10 hours drive in total, letting down the conference organizers. I'm feeling terrible about that because I am someone who is very reliable when I've agreed to do work and that's something that I pride myself on. And I had never ever, no even through all of these nights spent in hotels with no sleep, I'd never bailed on a job before. So I felt really awful the next day when I woke up back in Bristol, not where I was supposed to be in Manchester, really, really awful and realized that something needed to change. And that's the point that I started to take my recovery seriously, I think. I think that's the point, if I'm honest, that I acknowledged that I had an anxiety disorder. Here in the UK, getting access to mental health services is virtually impossible, seriously. And so I knew that if I went to the doctor, the best I was gonna get was an antidepressant prescription, which I'm not knocking, that might be helpful, but I didn't wanna go down that path. For me personally, I've tried antidepressants in the past and they don't, they don't work well for me. So I knew that I kinda had to do this on my own. So in January this year, I booked two holidays. I booked a holiday in July in Portugal with my family and I booked a holiday in September to Disneyland Paris and I set myself the time between January and that first holiday in July to get as well as I possibly could and to be able to do these holidays and not just to be able to do them but hopefully to be able to get some enjoyment from them so that I could feel like my life was starting to get back on track. So what did that work look like, the work that I needed to do to start to feel better? 
So first of all, I concentrated on anything that I was putting into my body that might be making my anxiety worse. So that included nicotine. I've been a smoker for a long time and then I'd finally moved on to vaping and nicotine is a stimulant and we know this can make anxiety worse. So I completely stopped nicotine and I've not done that. I've given up smoking and moved on to vaping, but I completely gave up nicotine. And then I started to work on how to feel regulated and comfortable and safe. And here's where being autistic becomes relevant. So first of all, I recognised that the way that I was living my life wasn't good for me. A big aspect of that was masking. Even though I'd been working on unmasking, I was still really shifting myself into many shapes in order to make other people feel comfortable and that isn't just in terms of the physical masking of making sure I held my face right and spoke right and said the things you wanted me to say that was also in terms of how I literally operated like I must spend this much time every week socializing with friends because that's what regular people do I must spend this much time each week doing x y and z because that's what a regular life should look like I think there was so much of that in there from like being young and trying to build a neurotypical identity that I needed to address all of those things. And in doing that, I recognised that in order to successfully sustain an unmasked me, that meant not spending too much time around other people because the effort of unmasking around other people is something that I can't maintain for very long and I do end up then slipping back into the mask, which then ends up draining me and making me feel bad. So I massively, massively reduced the amount of time that I was spending with people. I started spending a lot more time at home regulating, doing the things that help me with my sensory needs, doing the things that help me feel calm and safe. So that's like drawing and Lego and watching comforting TV shows and making tea and just like, just like looking after myself really, just treating myself with love and respect and nurturing myself and doing the things that make me feel safe. I also worked on emotional regulation. I've got ADHD alongside my autism and emotional dysregulation is a massive feature of that for me. So I would be going through in a week, potentially 10 big, extreme, different moods. I might have one day where I'm crying and one day where I'm angry and that takes its toll on the brain, right? And so I feel like that was also causing my brain to be quite flooded with adrenaline. So I worked with my ADHD doctors to improve my situation medication wise. And I'm on a different medication, which has massively helped my emotional regulation. Um, and again, that reducing socializing and doing the things that make me feel good has also helped me to regulate my emotions. I think I felt like I had to be capable of living a certain way or I wasn't getting life right. And a big part of this has been recognizing that life is right when I feel okay and when I can be at my best and when I can work to my strengths. And that benefits everyone, not just me, but my family as well. So all of these things were basically helping my brain to calm down and I would identify that probably, although the trigger was the Manchester conference, what had actually happened was that after a lifetime of undiagnosed neurodivergence, being diagnosed so very late, you know, it was just after I was diagnosed, so I was 36, 37, my brain was traumatised, it was flooded with adrenaline and it couldn't cope anymore and what that manif manifested as was a panic disorder. I also have a little backup plan. So at some point in all the chaos of the panic disorder, I had had a few nights when I'd been so unwell that I had ended up under the care of the crisis team and they had prescribed me a medication which shut off the panic and helped me to sleep. Now this is a medication that is non-addictive, it's not a benzodiazepine, but it is something that you wouldn't want to take too regularly. So they won't generally let you have it like as an ongoing prescription. But what I've agreed with my doctors is that I have a certain amount in supply that I'm able to get. I can pick up a certain amount every three months and that gives me a emergency supply. 
and it really does work. If I take this medication within half an hour to an hour, the panic will be gone and I will be asleep. So the fear that I'm going to have a whole night of this panic can be taken away by the idea that I've got this backup plan. And the knowledge that I have this backup plan means that I really haven't had to use it very much at all. I think I've used this medication once in the last five months because I knew I had the option. So anytime I would start to feel anxious, and out of control, I would tell myself, well, okay, let's see if we can manage this. But if we can't, we know we have this backup plan. And that in itself obviously reduced my anxiety. So now I want to tell you how the holidays went. How did it turn out? I set myself the challenge. I did the work. It has not been an easy year. I have worked harder on my mental health this year than at any point in my entire life. There have been times where it's been really, really hard, but let me tell you, the results that I've had this summer have made all of that work 100% worth it. I'm really pleased to report. So I had a week in Portugal, which uh, I actually made a vlog about, if you'd like to see that. I didn't need to use the medication. I didn't have a single panic attack. I had one evening where I felt a little bit anxious because I'd had a very busy day. I had the best holiday I've had in years. It was like like I used to be able to do before this panic disorder. I've always enjoyed travel and holidays, like carefully planned, carefully controlled, but it's something I do enjoy. And I thought that I was not gonna ever be able to do it again. And I was really sad about that. So to be able to go away for a week and think, this is something maybe I could do. I think you can see it in my face. It was wonderful, it was wonderful. And Disneyland, again, there is a vlog if you'd like to see that was, I mean, Disney is my happy place. So it was, again, no anxiety. And so Portugal, I was staying in a, in a villa. So that was a slightly like gentler challenge because my biggest panic attacks have always been in hotels. So my biggest fear has been hotels. And at Disneyland, we stayed in a hotel, a proper hotel. And so the hotel room itself can feel quite triggering for me now, but I had a great time, no panic no anxiety, just a great time. So yeah, it's been worth it. And yes, there's progress. Am I completely recovered? No, I'm absolutely not. We are talking eight months from when I first reached the point of enough is enough. So it feels like amazing progress for eight months. I am terrified of a relapse. It was horrible. So obviously that's in the back of my mind, but I kind of treat my anxiety now like the elephant in the room, if you will, something that I try not to look at too hard because I feel like if it gets too much attention, it might, it might come back. But I know now how to deal with it if it does. And I know I've got my backup plan. So I'm also optimistic that I can move on to being able to do travel again. There are places in the world that should I ever be financially fortunate enough, I'd really like to visit like America, like Japan that I had ruled out. Maybe that's something that one day I will be able to do. Um, and more importantly, I feel like me again. And that's really fantastic. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you are sitting where I was eight months ago, and if you are, I'm sending you all my love and compassion because I do know how that feels. I hope this has given you some hope. If you're supporting someone who's going through this, I hope that it's given you some insight. If you did find this video useful, please do hit the like button. And if you'd like to hear more from me, consider subscribing to my channel. I also run a members club and we have a Discord group. So if you'd like to support me as a creator so I can continue doing the work that I do, please do consider joining that club. There is a join button at the top of my channel and a few different prices, mem membership option wise. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time. Bye bye.